Hey guys, before we get to this video, give me a quick second. I am super happy to have these guys on board. Clearwater lights, you may have seen them without knowing what they are. These are fog lights, but they're not really for fog. They're for motorcycle and motorsports visibility. They're easy to install. I put them on my Yamaha Zuma 125 scooter with just the general installation kit. Me and Vinny did it in about an hour. And man, with the yellow lenses on these things, you are the most visible person around uh, their inventor says you can be seen in the desert at full brightness for up to a mile away and full brightness is what makes these lights unique you see the inventor Glenn after hitting a deer developed a dimmer switch for LED lights for motorcycles and that's what I installed and truth be told you have to dim these things all the way down to low just to ride in the city and once you turn them up woo, they are bright you've also got the sky blue lens lenses which are a little more ideal for riding at night and the quick on quick off yellow lenses for riding during the day it's sort of that opposite color spectrum that makes you visible these guys are all about safety and I actually do feel much safer and more visible with these lights on my scooter so go to clearwaterlights.com find the kit that fits your car find the kit that fits your bike and use code the smoking tire at checkout during the month of August to get 5% off your order hit the link in the description description and I got the best price around for you. Stay safe out there. Now enjoy this video. Hey everyone, welcome to the canyons and uh, well, I'm going to be totally honest with you. This is the Evora GT and in most ways it's very similar to the Evora 410 uh, that I've already driven. Uh, frankly, they've added a little bit of horsepower, they've added some trim, they've changed the tires, they've changed the aero a little bit, and that's basically it. So it's uh, they've aerodynamically optimized it. Uh, it has it weighs 3,175 pounds wet. It'll do zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds, 416 horsepower, and 317 pounds of torque. Uh, this one is the manual. You can also get an automatic. There's a trans cooler. Uh, it has a limited slip differential. Uh, the same uh, aluminum bonded and extruded chassis. Um, AP Racing brakes. Uh, four piston calipers uh, with 370 millimeter discs in the front, lightweight forged wheels. They have gone with Cup 2s, and if you read my story about the Evora 400 at the track days, uh, it had Cup 2. I, I started with Super, Super Sports and I put Cup 2s on it, and there was a big difference there. So let's have a drive and see how the Evora GT compares to its predecessors. <laughs> Driving experience 
is truly second to none. This car's got 185 miles an hour in it. Woo! Oh, wow, that, that was a big number, wasn't it? The balance of the chassis is so, so good. Understeer just doesn't exist. Even on these big bumps, I just drove that Roof R Turbo on Motons on this road. These big bumps were sending that thing bouncing around. The Lotus is perfect for those kinds of mid-road bumps. Let's see how's the turning radius. Not amazing, but pretty good. Pretty good. They give you 2.6 turns lock to lock. This thing's 120,000 as tested, 122,000, but it has many options. Uh, the base price is 96. Uh, this one has 10,000 in carbon fiber, 6,000 in green paint, and 8,000 worth of titanium exhaust. Uh, of those three, the titanium exhaust is the one I would keep. Uh, the rest could probably go. I'm, I'm totally okay with silver and plastic trim if the alternative is spending $10,000 on things that don't really change the car. Uh, it also has the carbon fiber rear hatch with the slats instead of a, uh, an actual window. The shifter is so great in this thing. It's short, direct, notchy but without any real extra shifter effort. Uh, however, the asterisk on that is it takes quite a long time to reprogram your right foot to do the slow, deliberate blip that you need to do in this car. Um, because the throttle is a drive-by-wire throttle, it doesn't, it, it sort of dumps down those big blips and so if you give it like a quick hard stab it just won't do anything you have to give it a, a real slow deliberate blip um, to get the engine to rev up so look so that was a slow deliberate blip right now go up to fourth gear now the quick stab it, it did a it did a I don't know if you can hear it but it did certainly a smaller blip I love the steering. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. It's not variable ratio, but it doesn't need to be. Uh, the seats are just basically like Recaro, like manual seats, or possibly Sparco, um, but super comfortable. so happy to have another one of these for five more days that I decided to make the video anyway even though there's not a lot new to say about the car. Oh, tires. So if you didn't read my last story where I did five track days in a Vora 400, I did four of them on Super Sport tires and the fifth on cups. What happened with the cups was that I warmed up with one lap, I ran the fastest lap around Streets of Willow that I've ever run, and then I couldn't catch that time ever again. Whereas with the Super Sports, my lap times were like a second to a second and a half slower than the Cup 2s, but I could run the same time over and over. On the street, I feel virtually no difference with the Cup 2s, except that they are going to burn through in like 2,500 miles, because that's what Cup 2s do. Down here, now we're really lotusing. This thing is fast, it's a great highway car, it's got great power, but what it really does is the dance. The back and forth where you can shift the weight around super, super precisely and balance the left versus the right and the front versus the rear with your feet and the tires. And it's honestly, it's a 
satisfying as anything on four wheels. It's just spectacular. You really weight up that nose and it'll stick the front when you go to turn in. See, I had to give it two blips there because the first one was too stabby and it didn't actually get it to blip. So I, I'm used to giving it a backup blip. That's my one gripe with the dynamics of this car. I wish the stabby blip. It's lovely, isn't it? Very nice car. So that's the idea. They continue to improve the Evora uh, incrementally. This is the last one. This is it. In Europe, they get the GT430. Here, it's just the Evora GT. They are fundamentally the same car, and they are they represent the, the last of the Evora line before uh, Lotus and their new owners, Geely, uh, come out with a whole new range of sports cars. So, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you to Lotus for letting me have this car for a couple days. I really appreciate it. It's, it's always just delightful. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.